Hey everybody, Rachel West here along with Rick Stroud and Joey Knight coming off of that Bucks loss in Cleveland to the Browns, guys. And obviously there was a lot going on there, but before we really dive into all the madness yesterday, let's first talk about the injuries that came out of the game. Tristan Wirfs going down, being carted off. It would be a huge loss for the Bucks if that if they were to miss him for a while, but it seems like there might be some optimism there, right, Joey? Right, a, a grim loss got a little more digestible today with, uh, with the uh, initial prognosis for Tristan Wirfs. That injury looked really gruesome. We all saw it there in the late stages of Sunday's game. Turns out Todd Bowles called it a high ankle sprain. What we've learned is it probably won't require surgery barring a, a, an unexpected second opinion. He may be down three or four weeks, but that's a heck of a lot better than what everyone initially feared. Uh, in the back end, on the defensive back end, things are looking a little more grim. Uh, Antoine Winfield, he went out for a, a concussion evaluation uh, against the Browns, re-entered, but sprained his ankle, according to Todd Bowles. So his status for next Monday night's game against the Saints doesn't look great right now. He'll be a day-to-day -day thing. And Sean Murphy Bunning, a cornerback, and another safety, Mike Edwards, are suffering what Todd Bowles called contusions. So they're probably day-to-day -day too. So. Uh, it'll be an interesting week just to see how those guys progress or regress going forward into a, a really big uh, NFC South division matchup. Absolutely. And OK, Rick, you're up to try to make this all make sense for us, yeah. whether it be the game management, the punting on fourth down instead of going for it. Just can you try to make this all make sense and the reasoning for some of the choices made yesterday? Well, we asked Todd Bowles about it and, and I had a tough time following his logic. I mean, um, you know, at the end of the game, after Levante David makes a stop, they have a chance to call time out there. There's really one play, um, you know, that they have a chance to, to win the game or not, uh, or to tie the game. Uh, but he chose not to do that. And then, you know, when they got the ball, it was really interesting. Todd Bowles said, we were going to run a play with Rashad White, which they did, and if it gained some yards, we would we would judge it from there. Well, it didn't gain any yards, and he didn't want to risk putting the ball in the air. That's what he said. Well, in the next play, Todd Br Todd Br Tom Brady threw the ball through a keyhole to Julio Jones for 20-something yards, and now all of a sudden they're across midfield. But the problem is they didn't call timeout after the running play, and so now they're down to eight seconds, and they end up – you know, two plays later with a Hail Mary. So even his own logic didn't make sense because you have a quarterback who's on a historic run in terms of not turning the ball over. I think he went 300 something passing attempts without an interception. Only has, what, two on the year, Joey? Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you don't trust that guy, but then you let him throw the ball because he thought he could fit it in there. So a lot of mixed messages. I think the bottom line, and you see this with defensive coaches, they trust their defense more than they do their offense at times. And I think that's been part of the byproduct all year. You would think having Tom Brady as your quarterback right. would allow you to have a little more trust there, but yeah. I guess perhaps not. Um, and as we talked about going into this game, mm. they were coming off the bye. They had built up a lot of momentum prior right. to that, the game in Germany against Seattle. Mm. Why do you think it kind of felt like they came out of the gates just more of the same? Yeah, I, I think now we've seen that the outliers are the first game against Dallas and then week 10 in Germany. That That is not who they have been. Who they have been is, is who they are. Uh, and we saw that on Sunday, unfortunately, in Cleveland. Uh, this is a team that can't run the ball very well. They find themselves in a lot of third and longs. I think they were third and seven plus eight times and went 0 for 8. Uh, they're not good on third down because they're not good on first or second down. And, um, you know, the, the biggest thing is you don't score points. I mean, this is a team that scores around 17 points a game. It's really tough. I think the defense did a good job for the most part until that last drive. Um, but they're not getting any better. And now, as you just mentioned with Tristan Wirfs being out, um, they're down to one player that played the last two years on the offensive line and Donovan Smith, who's played horribly the two of the last three weeks. So uh, there's not much hope. I wish I could sit here and tell you that it's all going to be, you know, ironed out. They got 21 practices to make this work and uh, the schedule's daunting starting with New Orleans on Monday night. Joey, Rick just said there isn't much hope but can you give us that hope and provide yeah. some optimism? Is it reasonable to expect that things can improve moving forward here to finish up the season? I can counter with a sliver of hope <laughs> because their division is so terrible. Yeah. All the Bucks have to do is win this division. They host a playoff game. They will have a, a playoff game at Raymond James Stadium. As, as it stands right now, they're technically still in first place in the NFC South at five and six. Atlanta's five and seven. The Saints and the Path Panthers each only have won four games. The Saints are coming off a shutout loss at home, and that's who the Bucks 
have uh, next Monday night at Raymond James Stadium, but they have not beaten the Saints in this building since New Year's Eve 2017. Wow. So, I mean, things, things are looking rough. Rick talked about the offensive line, the issues and not staying on sync, but if they can eke out two or three more wins down the stretch, that's probably enough to win this division. But I'll tell you what, look out for this season finale in Atlanta. That's who the Bucks finish up with. That could very well determine this division and the playoff spot accompanying it. That might just be the best of the worst, right? That's mm -hmm. Right. not that hard. <laughs> but yes, New Orleans in Ray J, you're gonna definitely be a tough test Monday. Uh, so we'll see if they can turn things around starting then um, in practice throughout the rest of this week. So make sure you guys are keeping up with all of our Bucks coverage that we have for you over on social media at Sports by Tampa Bay Times as well as over at TampaBay.com.